Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe, a series where we meet a new darts player from a new country in every episode. Today we are joined by a nine-time champion of Luxembourg, it's uh, Tom Burkell. Hi, my name is Tom Burkell, I'm a darts player from Luxembourg, and you're watching Darts Around the Globe. Tom, how are you doing today? Yeah, hi Pim, I'm fine, I'm fine, so far so good. Sounds, uh, sounds good. Um... First of all, we always ask the guests on our show, um, yeah, how did they get in contact with the dart sport? You've been playing darts for quite a while, so yeah, how have you started playing the darts? Ah, uh, well, that's um, uh, it's a few days ago already. Uh, that was back in 1988. Um, I was never in contact with darts before. Um, it was more how to say uh, luck or by accident. Okay. Uh, I was 17, 17 or 18 years old, I think. Me and my mom just moved to another town after my parents got divorced. Uh, at that time, I was a football goalkeeper. And um, I had an operation on my left elbow. So I was not able to do big things, you know. Um, uh, one day, in our new town where we moved in, uh, I went to a pub, which used to be our neighbor, actually, and uh, they had two dart boards where some guys were playing darts. Okay. Um, I was watching them, and after a while, since I didn't know the game at all, I asked them to explain me... Um, the board uh, with with all the segments uh, because i didn't know <laughs> nothing about it and uh, what the goal of the game was so they explained it to me and um invited me to 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 try and uh i was fascinated um that i didn't stop playing for the rest of the day <laughs> wow and, uh, from that moment on um i didn't stop anymore Darts got me from that moment on. <laughs> well, that that's quite a a good story already. Um, like that that bar next to your house was that for the you know the the coming next years after that first moment of darts was that the, uh, you know the main practice point the the point where you go where you went yeah. maybe after work or maybe after school or yeah absolutely uh, from from that moment on. Uh... Every day I went to that pub and I was playing darts there, practicing. And that was also not the real beginning in, uh, of darts in Luxembourg, but it was um, uh, early days of, of, of darts in Luxembourg. And we uh, created a team in that pub. Uh, so, um, yeah, we practiced in, in, in that bar every day together and there were some guys from other teams also. It was more in the north of, of the country. There were some, some other teams uh, up uh, in the north of the country that came to that place to practice because uh, it was, was a nice place to, to practice. Wow, so you really saw um, the darts developing in Luxembourg from that moment in around 1988 and you know 2021. Do you see a, see a big difference between those times? Uh, not as big as I expected, but, um, yeah, we are, we are Im improving. Um, we don't have that much more players that we had in the beginnings. Um, but the quality of the players is, uh, I think it, it's a little bit better than it was in the beginning. Okay. That's, that's good to hear. Let's go, you know, back to, to your career. Your, your first tournament was... Um, well, also the first year you became uh, the champion of Luxembourg for the first time in 1998. You, um, yeah, went or qualified. I don't know how that uh, how that went with uh, the World Masters in 1998. Um, do you do you still have memories from that first big tournament you you played? Yeah, I, yeah of course I have memories of that. <laughs> It was the first time I, I was so excited to to go there, and uh, I had no idea what uh, what will happen when when I get uh, when I got there. Um, yeah, I, I was playing the um, 
the Wilma World Masters qualifiers and uh, also the uh, the embassy qualifiers. They were held uh, in, in in just a few days, and uh, I remember the I think the um, embassy qualifiers were played first, and uh, I got out first round against I I still remember the name Paul Irvine was his name. Okay. I lost two nil, three nil, and just to let you know, I had 12 darts in each leg. Oh. And uh, I managed to be on a double with 12 darts each time. And I didn't have a single dart to play to go for the double. <laughs> so he, he was playing 11, 13, 11, 13, 11, 13. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unbelievable stuff. So then, then I that took me back to 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 the floors, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, in Luxembourg I, I was I was quite a good player, but only in Luxembourg. When you go to a big bigger tournament, then uh, the guys will show you how big you are. <laughs> and quite the same, uh, not that bad. Uh, but um, I lost uh, the day after I played um, the qualifiers for the Winmar World Masters, and it was I think it was against uh, Geoff Wiley. And I lost uh, two one in sets. Okay, yeah. still a set yeah. one then. And sorry. Yeah, you you you've still won a set then on that first, yeah. you know, yeah, big yeah. tournament you've played. So a great experience. Yeah, I'm if I really happy with that because uh, after the day before, I I had uh, the, the the game I had the day before. I was I was happy to 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 get a set for the the day after. <laughs> mm -hmm. The the Winmar World Masters was the first tournament you played in 1998. Um, if you look at your you know statistics online, there's a a, a big gap. Um, yeah. yeah. The 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 first tournament after that is the WDF Europe Cup in 2014. Um, you know, is there a reason for that big gap? Did you just yeah. stop playing some darts or? That was. Uh, Due to to my work, I, I, I would say, um, and I didn't have the motivation and uh, the the goals to to go for 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 big tournaments on international circuits. Um, I was just happy to play darts and I enjoyed playing darts, but uh, I had no no real goals on international basis. So I I, I just kept on, on playing in Luxembourg and. Uh, Due to my work, it it was difficult as well, and I didn't have money at all at that time. So now it, it, it's a little bit different. I, I can uh, uh, I can afford to to go to some tournaments at that time. I it, it was very difficult. That that's why. Yeah, makes makes uh, absolutely sense, of course. Um, yeah, the last couple of years, you really started to, you know, playing the darts internationally again and. Um, well, it works out for you. In 2019, you had the um, well, some of the best results in your career at the like getting into a, a quarterfinal of both the WDF tournaments in France, um, mm. and then also a semi-final in the 2019 um, Four Nations Cup. Mm. Um, also playing the WDF World Cup again, and then in 2020, some some you know fine results on in uh, Romania. Um, mm. Do do you also feel that you are yeah, you know, slowly becoming a better darts player um, in the last years. Yeah, I never was a bad dart player, I think, but uh, the focus was not that much on darts. Okay. Um, before it, it it was more like a hobby. I, I I love to play darts, and I go for for a game, and uh, and that's it. But uh, yeah, a few years back, uh, I think. 2014, it, it was uh, 2015, Stephen Miles um, called me and he asked me, you, you have to, to, to join the, uh, the national team of Luxembourg, we need you uh, to be there and then I really pushed myself a little bit to, to do that and, and it's, um, yeah, it showed me that uh, on international basis, um, I can try to do something. And uh, that, that's why I, I got back on the international circuit as well. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly uh, 
well, got to do some things on the international fields, especially on the Four Nations Cup for a player from Luxembourg to get in the semi-final of a tournament with the players from Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium. That's that's quite an achievement, of course. Um, yeah, you already said it in 2015, Stephen Miles, another uh, great Luxembourgish player, asked you to you know, become part of the national team. Um, yeah, Luxembourg is a small country. Do you think that playing in the national team and getting the opportunities to go to those uh, Europe Cups and those World Cups, do you think that will uh, that gives you some you know extra motivation, some extra energy to um, really go for for developing yourself in darts? Uh, yes, of course. Um, but uh, to be honest, when I I took the decision for myself to to play more on international basis, and whenever, from that moment on, especially before it was not uh, how to say, um, before I I was just practicing, yeah, when 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 I was up for it, and if not, it it, it was okay. But from from that point on uh, on in 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 2014. Uh, I started um, to take it for real, to to make it seriously, mm-hmm. and uh, so to be honest, uh, if I play for the national team or if I go for uh, an individual uh, international tournament, that makes no difference to me. The preparation uh, for, for the tournament is is always the same. I do it. I try to do it as, as good as I can. I give all my best, uh, if it's for the team or if it's for in individual stuff. Of course, um, you you are were already talking about, you know, the 2020 season and now the 2021 20, season that with no tournaments, um, like only in the, at the start of 2020. Um, how did you cope with that problem of not having? Um, you know the excitement of playing some somebody in real life, or um, you know getting and being at a tournament. How did you still manage to like push yourself to practice a little, or maybe do some online things, or wh- how how did your 2020 look like like regarding the darts? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, 2020. It started. Um with the COVID-19 and in the beginning I thought to myself, okay, that's um, with the first lockdown, uh, that's a nice opportunity. I can practice maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So when all all this is over, um, I'm in a good shape. Uh, Well, um, there was no way to get out of the situation. um, I completely lost motivation and I stopped playing. I stopped practicing for months. Uh, I restarted practicing end of August because we restarted the season, the new season in September, but that was also just for, for three weeks and then we had to stop again. And since then I didn't touch a dart. <laughs> uh, it, it's, I, I, I need to see uh, the target. I, I, I need a goal. And if there is no goal and, and I don't see anything in, in front of me, uh, I, I'm, I'm not motivated to, to, to practice just, uh, just like that. Young guns, they, maybe they uh, practice uh, because they, they, um, they are new in the sport or, uh, yeah, they are young and full of energy. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm playing darts now for 32 years. Um, yeah, of course, I love the game. I love to play darts, but uh, not just all by myself and uh, without tournaments and, and the social contacts with my friends. That's that's not what I want to do. Yeah, I've I've definitely noticed that myself as well. It's very difficult to you know practice all by yourself, practice with no goal because you know the PDC players they they still have a, t- a tournament here and there, but what is there for the amateur? Um, players nothing really with without the WDF tournaments uh, particip- uh, uh, like continuing so difficult times uh, over there in Luxembourg as well um, yeah. let's let's talk about darts in Luxembourg um, yeah like 
is Luxembourg, can you say it's a it's a darts country? Is it uh, a popular sport over there? Uh, to be honest, I don't think so. We have, um, at the moment, we have 250 licensed players in Luxembourg. Um, the top we had uh, that was back in, in, in the late 80s, uh, we were around 400 or something like that. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't think Luxembourg is a darts country. Maybe more, uh, I, no, it, it, even not an electronic darts country, but we have more electronic darts players here in Luxembourg than steel darts players. But uh, I don't think that Luxembourg, you can call it a darts country. No. Okay, um, so, like, the, the, the darts... There has to be like a, a small dart circuit, maybe, you know, the the pub on the corner with uh, at the place you, you lived. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that darts circuit? Um, let's say you are a, a player from Luxembourg that wants to become a better darts player. Where does he need to start in Luxembourg? Where does he go? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, back in the days and in, in, in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, there was a place in Luxembourg City called the White Rosa Pub where uh, really a lot of dart players met and, and, and had games together every Monday, uh, every week. Um, but uh, places like that doesn't exist anymore. If you want to play darts in Luxembourg, you have you you don't have to, but it's better to join a club and uh, to 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 go there on on uh, on their practicing nights. Um, it's different from from club to club. Uh, some some have uh, practicing nights only on on Wednesdays, or some some others have it on on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, it depends, but. Um, a big place or a good place to to go for for darts in Luxembourg. It's um, I, I don't see it. Uh, there is there is none. Mm, that, that's normally during the season. Um, I don't go for practicing nights very much. Uh, I see my friends for for the games on the weekends, but during the the week, also due to my work as well, because I'm working on shifts. But uh, during the week, I practice at home for myself. Maybe sometimes here and there, I, I find the day uh, where I can go with uh, one colleague or two mm -hmm. to, to have a practicing day. But uh, normally, I practice at home, and uh, I don't see other guys doing different. Some, some, go, uh, some of the guys go for, for practicing nights uh, at their teams. Uh, the, the, yeah. The organized practicing nights for, from the team but um, yeah there's nothing really more well that's that's unfortunate to hear um you yeah. you said you you said that mm -hmm. you know quite some time ago Luxembourg had four, around 400 players and now it's more around 250 do you see a reason for that decline of interest in in the darts <sighs> Not really. I, we we were asking the, the, the this question as well, but uh, we don't see the problem, the real problem, why uh, we don't uh, have more players here in Luxembourg. Um, maybe it's also a problem that we that it's quite difficult to get youth players in Luxembourg because uh, all all the teams um, are playing in pubs. And minors are not allowed to get in unless their parents are with them. So, but uh, when I, I I look back when I was uh, 15 or, or 16 years old, and I, I was asking my mother to to come with me to the pub because I wanted to practice darts. Um, no, <laughs> I don't see my mom doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so that's maybe why. And and most of of the young guns here in, in Luxembourg, they. Um, also have other other sports uh, like football or, or basketball and yeah we need absolutely a place not in a pub where uh, people can meet to, to play darts but um, there is no 
difficult because uh, you know I I um, like about the youth I I, I wrote a question down about uh, you know the four nations cup where there was never a, a youth team from luxembourg while there's always a, a youth tournament for for you know germany uh, belgium and the netherlands so the opportunity was there but still no youth players from luxembourg that's you know very, very sad to hear especially you know in our last podcast we had um uh Friedrichson from iceland as a guest and um that's also a small country small population but I think you're right what you're saying about um, like the, the pub culture. You To attract youth, you have to get them out of the pubs and you know organize um, maybe youth clubs that are focused on, on the dart sport itself and not about you know the, the drinking fun uh, <laughs> behind the sport. So that, that, but that's, that's difficult with um, you know so like are you, are you guys working on? Um, developing that youth game or like thinking about new ways to for opportunities for those players uh, who, who should work on that that's the point we don't have uh, we, we have uh, uh, our administration for for the for the federation we are <clears throat> we are nine people working for the Darcy in Luxembourg and that's it and whenever you ask uh, for, for somebody to, to give you a hand, uh, it's quite difficult to find some somebody. So to find some someone who cares about youth week by week, mm-hmm. um, there is there is none. I always said when I stop playing darts, I will do that. But uh, at the moment, I'm still playing, and because of my work as well, it's it's quite difficult to, uh, for, for me as well to do that. But I, I really want to do something if no one else will. So um, maybe in a few years, I can manage uh, to, 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 to get a hall where we can play darts every week. But that's the next problem, to, to find uh, a place like that. We will yeah. see. Um, but um, <clears throat> it's in my mind, and uh, yeah, I will, I will try it. I will... Do my best to 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 make it happen, but um, at the moment it's it's still quite difficult. Yeah, I, I can understand. At least you know the the first part. The problem is noticed. You know, you, you already said we need those Luxembourgish youth. Um, that's already the first uh, the first step. Um, you know what is quite surprising, or although you have you don't have a lot of players in Luxembourg, you do organize. You know, what a great tournament, the WDF Luxembourg Open and the Luxembourg Masters, a tournament where a lot of the best Dutch, Belgium and uh, even English players attend that tournament. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, how do you see the um, Luxembourgish participation at that WDF Luxembourg Open? Um, and it is quite difficult to, you know... Um, beat those great players from the Netherlands and Belgium. Do you still see Luxembourgish people attend more than any other tournament? Yeah, it, it's a little bit disappointing when you see that we have 250 licensed player in Luxem- players in Luxembourg and we organize, and when I say we, I mean we, the nine people in, mm-hmm. in the administration from, from, the, from the federation. Uh, we have a lot of work with that to organize that. Um, mostly Tom Becker, who is doing a great job every year. Um, but besides that, uh, as a player here in Luxembourg, you have the opportunity to go to a big tournament with three, four hundred people playing there on on a weekend with uh, really high class players. Yeah, um, you don't take the opportunity to get there to, to, to play guys like that. We have 30, 40 players uh, from licensed players from, from Luxembourg coming to the tournament and playing there out of 250. That's um, that's a little bit disappointing, I, I have to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even for a country in your own, for a tournament in your own country yeah. and then yeah. still the, the people don't attend. Yeah. A difficult nobody story. Has to go, and no, nobody has to travel that far. It's it's about 30, 40 kilometers. <laughs> so it's quite easy to get there, no? 
exactly. Um, you know, developing darts in Luxembourg sounds difficult, and it's it's always difficult in a small country like that. Um, but still, you you already called some names. There there are quite some Luxembourgish um, players just like you who try to compete abroad, who try to um, compete at, at those WDF tournaments. Um, but yeah, what what are your goals for the next coming years? Is it um, following the WDF circuit again? If it star if it starts again, is it trying it at Q School one day? Trying this the, the Challenge Tour maybe one day? Uh, Q School. I I was there. I think it was in 2018 or two, no 2017. Yeah. On my list, I have 2018, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah um, I went there just uh, to see how it works and, and uh, just just for to, to, to have the, uh, how to say, um, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, to me, it was just, just an, a new experience to make. Um, I must say it was totally different to to anything else from from the BDO or w, WDF stuff because it, of course it's more professional. It's, it's uh, you cannot compare. But um, yeah, I must say I, I tried also some uh, qualifiers, European tour qualifiers. Uh, then again, it's it's difficult for me because they are held on Thursdays. It's in the middle of the week, so I need more days off from work. Um, I have to travel as much as I have to travel for a WDF tournament. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, from 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 that point, it's it's better for me to have a tournament on a weekend when I'm off from work than playing a tournament in the middle of, of, of a week or a qualifier for a tournament in the middle of a week when I have to take off from, from one day off from work. So I, I don't think I will go for, for a tour card again. Um, well, it, it was never my intention to, to get a, a tour card. Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a nice experience, but that's it. I will give the WDF um, a go for the next uh, few years. I think uh, they will, they are doing a great job with uh, Richard and, and, and all the guys uh, around him. Um, yeah, maybe I can manage uh, to to make, uh, to qualify one, one, once for, for a world championship. If not, it's it's okay. But uh, that's my my goal. That's my goal. And maybe one day I will win a tournament in in individual because I won two in in pairs. Mm -hmm. um, in individual, that would be a nice thing to do. <laughs> a nice goal, yes. Well, certainly you certainly have uh, some nice goals to um, you know to, to 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 develop yourself to and still practice and still go to those tournaments. So. You know that's that's nice to hear, and like like you said about the WDF, they, they the plans for some majors are already there. Some plans for their own world championship are there. Those are also, of course, um, tournaments you could go for and maybe qualify for. Yeah. Um, I think one of those tournaments was also in the Netherlands. So uh, let's hope yeah. you'll you'll qualify for that tournament, and um, well, I can meet you there, and uh, and hopefully some other Luxembourgish players as well. Um, yeah, I want to thank you, uh, Tom Burkel, for this interview and this interesting talk about um, this interesting conversation about darts in Luxembourg. And uh, I want to wish you all the best for your for your own career. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pim.